Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another video. Uh, this one is on a 2004 Honda Metropolitan that I just picked up today. I paid 600 bucks for it and then another 125 bucks just to get a license plate for it. Uh, the guy sold this as like not running, uh, it had been sitting for four years in his garage, but I was able to start it up. So, So it idles, but very roughly as you can hear. So I'll be cleaning the carb, changing out the gas, and hopefully it'll run better. To clean the carb on these Honda Metropolitans, what you have to do is take off this inner seat. So there's four bolts, bolt here, bolt here, two bolts there, and then this whole thing will pop off. You also have to take off this little uh, latch right here. So you just have to Phillips head to do that. So we're gonna do that really quickly and uh, show you afterwards. Okay, now that we got this seat off, here is our carburetor. So we're gonna have to take off all these hoses, this throttle cable. Uh, we're gonna have to take off this plug right here, the choke plug and the intake off as well. So we're gonna take off all those hoses and then I'll get back to you guys. Now I got mo the majority of the hoses off. The three remaining hoses are this gas line, which is this one right here. Then there's two coolant lines that run through the carburetor to, I think, warm up the gas or something. Um, so to get to the coolant lines, you actually have to take off the carburetor first. But this fuel line, we can still get to while the carburetor is still on there. Um, I would suggest using a pair of vice grips and putting the vice grips on like that to close off the gas line so that when you take it off, a bunch of gas doesn't come um, flying out. For the coolant lines, not a lot of coolant's gonna come out when you take those off. Just make sure they're not like tipping downwards. Just toss them right up here, maybe zip time if you want to. But in my experience, coolant doesn't rush out of there. So now we're gonna start taking off the carburetor. First, we're gonna take off, we're gonna unscrew this all the way so that the air intake comes off and then we'll unscrew either this one or this one uh e whatever one's easier for you it really doesn't matter okay that was kind of the only tough part of this whole carburetor thing was getting the carburetor off the intake and off the part going to the engine it really helps to just take a big flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry at each side as you go and eventually you'll get it out so now you can see your coolant lines right there uh, you just need to make, take off those clamps and then those coolant lines should slide right off okay now that we got the carburetor off um, i usually like to put it inside of a container like this just to keep all the gas and everything from spreading you're also going to need a smaller Phillips screwdriver to get these three screws out and you're going to need some carb clip. Another thing I like to use is compressed air. Uh, if you have an air compressor, that's what I use. Or those little aerosol cans would work just as well. Start off by taking off the carburetor bolt by taking these three bolts off. And on these carburetors, they use these really crappy Phillips head bolts. So if one of them doesn't come off, move on to the next two and hopefully those will come off and then take a flathead screwdriver like I'm gonna do and pry up on this bowl and then that last one should crack loose enough that you can um, get the rounded bolt out. Uh, if it doesn't come out then you gotta take a pair of vice grips and put it on there and then spin it out. Okay, now that I got this bowl off, I'm gonna be spraying that out with carb clean and then compressed air. Same with every single part inside of here. So I'm gonna take off this float by removing that pin right in there. Then I'm gonna be using a flathead screwdriver, taking out both these jets, blowing them out with compressed air and carb clean. And then once I have all these pieces out, remember where they go obviously, um, and then clean that inside of the carb underneath that bowl, or underneath that float. I also like to spray inside of there um, usually I don't mess around with the diaphragm up there because it never seems to do anything to me. So blow those parts out, 
and then put it all together. So we got the carburetor bowl back on, everything is cleaned out. So now it's ready to go back onto the moped. Um, just put everything back the way that it came off. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna show the whole process because that's gonna take too long, but yeah, I'm gonna throw it back. Three, two, one. Um, now you have to prime up the fuel system. In order to do that, you just turn the key on, listen for the fuel pump, and you turn the key off, turn the back on. You do that about three different times, and it'll prime that fuel system up, and then you should be able to start it. So we're gonna start it up and see how it runs. Okay, so now it idles basically perfectly. Uh, there's no like choppiness like there was before, and I can rev it, and it'll before it wouldn't even rev. So being the car did do something. Um, I'm not even gonna replace the gas because it's running fine and I'm just gonna run this gas tank out. Okay, so I got the carburetor back together and it runs really good. So I'm gonna throw that seat back in and then take it for a test ride. Okay, so I just got back from the test ride. Uh, we know that it runs. It's having a little trouble idling, but I think that's just from all that stale gas in there. So I siphoned out as much as the gas I could, um, but of course the siphon broke off inside the tank. So there's a little bit of hose inside the tank. For now, it'll be fine. Um, I don't think it's causing any harm in there. So now I'm gonna change the oil. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I should have done that first, but I'm going to change the oil. Okay, so this thing still doesn't idle right. Uh, I've adjusted the idle screw up all the way and down all the way, um, and it still won't idle. So I looked at the fuel filter and it's this orange color. So I'm gonna replace that fuel filter. Um, and I, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna take, a, take off the whole tank and all the floorboards and everything, and clean everything up. Um, I might replace the fuel pump as well, because I've heard those can go bad. So I'm gonna replace the whole fuel system and then see if it'll idle better. Okay, so we finally got the floor pan and basically the whole body off of this thing. There's a bunch of different little screws and plastic clips um, that you have to take off, like six different screws that you have to take off and uh, four different clips. And these clips are, <laughs> they break and there's no easy way to take them off. So I just broke all of them off and I'll just get new clips on there when I put everything back together. So we got this tank exposed. Um, it pops right out. So I'm just gonna be taking the whole tank out and I have to get that tube out of there that I accidentally broke off inside of there. So I'll just empty the whole tank, replace all the fuel lines and the fuel filter, and then see if it'll idle. Cool. Okay, so we got our tank emptied out, all the bad fuel out of there, and that hose that I dropped in there, we got that out. Uh, now I got my new fuel line. Yeah, it's a fancy yellow color. Um, so we're gonna replace all the fuel lines just to make sure there's nothing in there that's gonna clog up the carburetor later. Thank <laughs> you. 